Today is September 11th, 2023. It is the National Day of Catalonia, also known as La Diada. So for you who cannot be here today, I wanted to walk around basically the center of the city in the morning to give you an idea of what happens on this day of celebration. So it is a day off. You're going to see there's a lot of people around. Not too many people in the Plaza de San Jaume, where we are right now. There's a little bit more going on this morning. I had some troops and some reenactments of some firings and things going on here. I'll put a video over the top of this so you can get an idea of what was going on. You can see all of the decorations and what you'll notice is there's a bunch of Catalan and separatist flags all around the city today. We're gonna start off here in the Gothic Quarter and then we're gonna get over to the Bourne where basically everything happens in the morning, the Fossa de las Moreras or the Mulberry Tree Grave. Well, you can see right here, we've got the Generalitat. This is the Catalan government building. And this year, the idea is to promote kind of the different accents, the different dialects of the Catalan language. So you can see a few different ways to say the color red right there. And what we've got going on is Portas Obertas, which is the open doors. So if you made a reservation, I this year did not, but if you make a reservation, you can get inside and get a little bit of a tour of the government building. On the exact opposite side, let's get out of that sun at City Hall. You can see the Barcelona City Hall there with the Barcelona crest and the Catalan flag on it. Usually we've got the Catalan flag right in the middle over here, but on the Barcelona building, we've got some as well. So like I said, not too much going on in the plaza right now. There were a bunch of people here a little bit earlier, but what we're gonna do is get out of this Gothic quarter, head on over to the Bourne, cross the Via Laetana, and uh, check what's going out. Like I said, it is a day off, so you will see a lot of different groups around. Looked like some Castellar groups we just passed. And you will see a lot of the Catalan separatist flag on bags or anything. I think these souvenir shops on days like today make a bunch of money selling those different flags and shirts. So we're getting to the end of the Gothic Quarter here. We've got a little ice cream shop. We're on the Jauma the First Street, coming up on the old Roman walls, and then that Via Laetana that I mentioned before. But you can see more buildings decorated with that flag for the day. See those Roman walls marking basically the end of this Gothic quarter for us. And then we've got actually a bunch of construction. It's 
So if you haven't been over here, the Via Laetana is getting completely redone. They're going to make it much more of a pedestrian zone. So we're going to have these bigger sidewalks you can see behind me that should be extended out. And then it's supposed to be only maybe like one way up each, each way. So more for like buses and kind of that through traffic, but really not a lot of, you know, the day-to-day -day driving or anything. So they've started the second phase, which is going to be down here towards the port. You can see one of the buses going by right now. So once this light changes, we can get over into that Bourne. Like I said, that's where in the mornings on September 11th, there's always the big celebrations, gatherings, and floral offerings over in that Fosa de las Moreras. So that's what we'll go see, see the different associations that are around and different things that are popping off. We are currently walking down Argenteria or Plateria Street, which would have been the old silversmiths street. One of the things in the Bourne is that a lot of those guilds banding together and living in the same areas, working in those areas as well, have a lot of the streets that still retain those names. So walking down, heading towards Santa Maria del Mar, we've got the silversmiths which is always a really nice street. What you're seeing right now is a couple tour groups that we're going through, but it's usually at this time, right around 11 o'clock or so, not this busy, not this packed. But like I said, it is the holiday today. So we've got a lot of people heading around and definitely everybody heading over here. I talked about it in my September guide. If you haven't seen that and you're coming over to Barcelona soon, check that out. But the idea is that in the morning, everything happens over here. In the afternoon, it's always usually a different gathering at 514, because we're celebrating basically the end of the battle of Spanish succession here in Barcelona in the year 1714. And so at 514, the bigger demonstration in the afternoon begins. I don't know if you can hear the helicopters above us, but they're always flying around during these demonstrations. So we'll flip around so you can see what's going on. Coming up on Santa Maria del Mar, St. Mary's of the Sea. And I don't know if you're visiting, a lot of people are aware that it's a holiday when they make their plans. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. You always see a lot of people surprised with all the people around here. Looks like Santa Maria del Mar is open today. Usually about a five euro charge to get inside at this time. But with the holiday, allowing people to get in for free. All right, and this is what I've been talking about, especially when I say probably don't want to do tours in this old area during this time. See all the people that are out here and all the booths that are basically set up with all the independence groups and sales that they have. So you can see everybody out here along the way. And this is going to go through, down through the Passage del Born. So we got a lot of different shirts. Looks like this is the FC Barca booth right there. San Culé. 
We've got a lot of different groups out here. You can see all the different flags, towels, keychains, everything that they're selling. Got some board games. We'll get over to the Fosa de las Moreras. Now, like I said, there's going to be a lot of those groups that are out and about. Let's see if we can get a good view. What you just heard was the Catalan hymn, which is something that was written from Spanish cheer there. But what you have is the Catalan hymn, which comes from the Reaper's War, which took place in the 1640s. And basically the idea that the Count Olivares, who was in charge of the government at the time for Philip IV, had stationed troops at the border to basically fight against Spain in that 30 years war. And with the bad treatment from the troops towards the Catalans, especially those that were housing those troops, uh, there was big riots that were started and a lot of those farmers came down with their sickles and that's the idea behind the song Bon Cop da Fals which is a good strike with the sickle and that's where that kind of eerie hymn comes from. Uh, the riots ended with the Viceroy in Catalonia being murdered, being killed in the raids. It led to a lot of different kind of looks for reforms and actually a call for a Catalan Republic protected by France by Pau Claris, one of the bishops around here. And that's always remembered within that Catalan anthem that we have. Why everything is over here is because later, after the Habsburg dynasty had died out and basically Charles II has died without an heir, the Battle of Spanish Secession kicks off. And that Battle of Spanish Secession comes to an end in Barcelona, as I mentioned before, in 1714 on September 11th, when the city is forced to basically give up. They can't hold off. The 40,000 troops, you see all sorts of different numbers, all sorts of different troops that come in that they've been holding off for 14 months. Let's check this out. Again, 
hear the hymn again for you. To see all the people in the plaza. This is why I recommend not coming over here in the morning on tours. Can't really hear much. just over and over again these different groups coming in making their offerings to what is the memorial for those that lost their lives during that battle and it just fills up with all this smoke all right, try to keep moving here get around to different areas you see just a lot a lot of people around Look at that smoke in the air. You can see the shirts that they have made for this year, Via Fora. So you see a lot of those today. Let's see one right here. What we're going to do is we're going to try to get over to the Passage de Born, kind of check out what's going on over here. I think you guys have the idea of what happens in this plaza. Looks like it's clearing up a little bit. Just imagine trying to do a tour and walking through here, or even just trying to follow a guide through here. Now this is platform for the language here. And again, to this, this day especially, this year, trying to really promote all of the different kind of dialects, different parts of that Catalan language. Because maybe not a lot of people know this, but there's more than just the Catalan that's spoken here in Catalonia. You've also got former parts of what was the crown of Aragon, Valencia, Mallorca and the islands there, those Balearic Islands, Andorra, which is the only country that has Catalan as its official language. Um, parts of Aragon still speak 
a little bit. And then there's a small town in Italy, in Sardinia, called Alghero, that was repopulated by the Catalans after they took over Sardinia. And some of the population still speaks that. And those areas actually have a group called the Paisus Catalans. There is a group of people that are not just wanting the independence for Catalonia, but they want the independence for those Catalan-speaking areas. Now, all of those different kind of dialects and, and languages do have their own names and they do have their own, you know, their words and, and different kind of accents and things. And so that's what we'll see a little bit with uh, the idea of the languages today. Might have a little concerts and stage set up for some speeches here. So it clears up quite a bit over here, but we'll head over to the Bourne Cultural Center which, as it's holiday and it's Monday, is, is closed. But it's a really cool area to see after that Battle of Spanish Secession when the King Philip V comes in and puts in those new decrees, also puts in a giant fortress. And that fortress basically is making sure that the Catalans do not rebel again. They tear down thousands of houses over here. Many of them have been destroyed during that war as well and displace a lot of people. And they put in this fortress, which is now the Ciutadella Park today. What they found basically in this building, which was a market, is that under the floor, they had some of the remains from those houses. So they turned it into a really cool museum, free museum, just to check out. I always recommend when you're over in the area, see some of the remains of those buildings. And over here, they've got some cultural things going on. So it looks like I saw some uh, castellers, human towers. So we'll go and, uh, and try to check those out as well. Here's a little mini one being made. They did have some larger ones. With everybody staying back here in the shade, we'll jump into the sun. Got a tour group there, which don't know if they know what's what's to come up the way. But a few more booths over here selling some different shirts and things, different independence groups, and then all of the human tower groups right here. We might do a little jump ahead, depending on how long this takes to kind of get set up, because as I was walking over, I saw them kind of coming down. Maybe we'll get around to the other side here. taking a little bit longer than I thought, so when they start building again, we'll uh, start filming for you. And it looks like we're starting up again.
support for their backs, but also to be able to climb up. And they send the smallest child up to the top. You can see her climbing up there on the left. Struggling a little bit just to grasp on to everything. But she's making her way. She's a trooper. to tremble a little bit. I don't think we're going to make it. Got another girl who doesn't look like she's going to make it. Oh, she's going, she's going. They're cheering her on.
Star is pretty cool to see. And you just see the passion in their faces, those of them that are building that up, holding, trying to get there, and then finally making it, especially after that one, the, the one girl, I don't know if you can make it out, she was looking down and she said, I'm not gonna make it, I'm not gonna make it, and everyone started cheering her on. She made it up to the top, and then those on the bottom, those in the middle, were just really, really struggling to hold it, hold it, hold it. They knew they just needed to make it a little bit. So once you get that full construction, the deconstruction, and then you just hear everybody's applause and everything. Always really cool. So they'll keep doing that throughout the morning. Uh, and some other little, you know, sardanas and different things. There's a lot of different open doors, a lot of different places you can visit. We saw the Generalitat, but also the Parliament over in the park that I mentioned before. Uh, and other various museums and spots and other places even around the rest of Catalonia. It's not just over in Barcelona. It's just become now the Catalan Day, right? Even though this marks the day that the battle ended here in Barcelona. But it's always really cool to just see all the people around here in the morning. And lots of other things are still going on. I myself am going to go over and check out the Catalan Book Week, which started just a couple days ago, going for another week or so. And if you haven't checked out any of the things and you're planning on coming over to Barcelona, remember that I have my monthly guide published every month ahead of the time so you can know what's going on, what are the best activities, dates, and things going on around the city. So make sure to check those out.